Hey everybody, this is Dark Guardsman, and we're back here doing more development stuff. So, uh, for those who've been following on Twitter, they know, you know I've had a bit of a cold here, so progress on the ICBM Classic uh, to 112 port has been kind of delayed. I will be getting back into that hopefully by the start of this next week, as my cold's finally disappearing. It has disappeared enough that I did get a chance to start working on MFS again. So I know a few people were reporting a few bugs about it, and I for completely forgot that I was in the middle of a uh, GUI rewrite for this. So I dove back into the finishing up the GUI rewrite to get a release out that would fix a lot of the major issues that have been reported, such as uh, crashes with the, the stuff getting scaled too high and a few things like that. So those issues have been fixed, but they're just in a different branch. With the, the GUI rewrite, though, I went ahead and I did some more work on the cohesion driver enough to get it to actually functioning again and I went ahead and did some work on a few other the, the GUIs to get them where they work and we'll be doing a release here probably in a few days with uh, once I get a, a chance to go over all of the GUIs uh, with the new features. Now with the cohesion driver as you can already tell there's now a fluid tank render on here, uh, there's battery slots, there's a fuel slot and of course four chart reading uh, but there's an on off switch. Of course, all of these tiles also contain on-off switches now. They do actually function. Uh, so you can use these to turn everything on and off. Uh, when you see the red icon, this means it's on. When you click that, if you see the green one, it is off. It's a bit misleading because people usually expect to see green or red. Uh, see green to be mean on and stuff. But this is part of the old classic on-off switches that are kind of like that. Eventually, there will be like a red uh, LED here to indicate that it actually is on. Uh, versus off and we'll get to that eventually a lot of the other tiles for the other mods will eventually see that change as well uh, But yeah, so we got a tank here. Uh, this will show the amount of fluid in here Eventually this uh, text here will be moved up to here somewhere either over top of the tank itself or as a tooltip So it will always be rendering on there uh, This the actual texture will be changed to look like Fortron as well So that for those you have seen remember the old Fortron fluid texture that will be put in the back of there to make it look a lot nicer uh, the battery slots should work. Um, I haven't exactly tested them, but they should support all uh, electrical items. Uh, the fuel slot here is implemented. I, I have fixed the issue where it was accepting all items. It now should only accept fuel-based items. Uh, eventually, this will be probably moved over here along with a fuel timer. So it'll be like a normal furnace fuel timer. Uh, we have a couple more tabs implemented now. So as you notice, we have tabs over here. Uh, so you have the main tab, which is what you'll see every time you open the, the, the GUI. So open it and we'll show this tab. Upgrade tab, so this has been uh, moved away from the main screen, so the old upgrades were on the main screen. This is to kind of reduce clutter, plus you usually aren't looking at your upgrades all the time when you're messing with the machines. So the first thing you want to do is when you open this up is just see if, how much fuel you got if the things are on. So uh, we'll probably end up having either just this three upgrades. I might add one more slot, and right now it is coded for six slots, but only three of them are display. Uh, the ideal is if I leave it at 3, we'll put text right next to here that will tell you how much bonus you are getting. So right now how this says you're getting 60 uh, liters a second increase for scale module. So what it'll end up saying over here is you'll be getting that 60 liters per second times 64 so you'll get a ton of increase. Uh, so it'll actually tell you how much you're getting out of each slot. So you can real easily do the math rather than having to do it in your head. Uh, there will be a connections thing, so this will be part of a new system that will be implemented here in the future that will let you manually do connections. For those who actually are familiar with the mod, they'll remember that there was a frequency system where you set the frequency and then it would tell you how to connect everything. Right now, all stuff is set to zero for the frequencies, so it can't be changed. Uh, the frequency system will be completely removed and it will be replaced by a connection system. Uh, the connection system will work similar to how ICBM works if, uh, for those who have used ICBM. You'll know that, uh, if I can get to find the items here. Uh, for the silo computers here, so if you grab the launch controller and this, that you have to actually connect these two together for them to work. It'll be a similar system. Actually, that's Mac. I grabbed the wrong thing. <laughs> Example of another mod I need to work on. So you grab these data chip and you connect the two. So and then it shows up in here. So this will be the same exact concept. You'll have a similar GUI to this on the connection screen and it'll tell you what you have connected and you'll be able to manage your connections. You'll be able to go, okay, for this connection, I want to output Fortron to or I want to pull Fortron from or I just want to disable that connection. You'll be able to do this on this GUI when it's implemented. Uh, settings GUI will contain minor settings. For the Cohere driver, there probably won't be a massive amount of settings. The most you'll probably see is uh, min max input output uh, settings on here. Um, acceptable fuels, um, do you want to accept uh, sided connections and stuff like that. 
probably some redstone settings too uh, you'll probably start to see a little bit more settings on things like Fortron capacitors and the field matrix so the field matrix is probably going to be the one that ends up using a lot of the settings simply because I plan to do away with this entire grid system. I know some people like the grid system, but from a usability or user point of view, it is probably the most difficult system to use because you had to understand what the arrows did in order to do things. I know the arrows aren't rendering on here because I disabled the renders for them, but you would have to go, okay, I need to place items in certain slots and the slots are very restricted. So what we're going to end up moving to is like similar to how we have it over here is you'll have an upgrades uh, GY that will be a pretty sizable inventory that you just put cards in. And then down the settings, there'll be some slider bars. So if you had like 120 scale cards in here, you'll be able to you'll have three sliders, which will let you scale in all three axes. And between those, you can use all 128 of those cards. You can go, okay, I wanna scale so much in the north, so much in the south, and so on and so on. Uh, but anyways, that's about it for the GUI uh, changes I wanted to show off, and I'll see you guys later, and hopefully when this coal to mine clears up, I'll be able to get back to uh, working on ICBM Classic.